Welcome back, Camly, to another Tea Time with Cam. I am drinking a green tea, just plain and green. I haven't done a Tea Time with Cam in a long time. I've been vlogging a lot recently, and it's been a lot of fun, but I do also just miss sitting down and talking. And today's topic is loneliness, which has been a pretty big theme in my life recently. Honestly, this past year has really been lonely. I really am the most alone I've ever been in my whole life. I grew up in a big family and whether I liked it or not, there was always people around. I didn't even have my own room growing up. I was very used to always having company. And then at 14, I got into a serious relationship and as you know that lasted five years we were always together always talking i never really felt like i was alone and when there's one person in the world who makes you feel like you're not alone that relationship can very quickly become codependent and we were extremely codependent with one another towards the end of that relationship even though i wasn't alone I still felt very lonely. I had really become isolated from my friends and family. I pretty much cut everyone in my life off and it was just me and him. And then in the blink of an eye, that relationship was ripped away. And then I moved closer to family and for a while felt really alone even though I was surrounded with love because like i said at that point i had kind of cut everyone off and so it took some rebuilding of those relationships but no matter what i had them by my side they were there for me they loved me and i really wasn't alone and then eight months later i got into another relationship which lasted about eight months. I think after being in a relationship for five years i really struggled to not exist in a relationship to not have someone to be codependent with was something that i just wasn't ready to face that relationship is always going to mean a lot to me it did at the time and still does i didn't consciously get into that relationship just to like fill a void but there's a lot that i wasn't facing we really loved and cared about each other but when that relationship ended the main reason being my codependency problem for the first time in my life i told myself like okay it is time to really just be alone it was honestly one of my biggest fears and i think that's true for a lot of people the idea of just sitting with yourself and your feelings and really accepting the fact that like no one's gonna save you from that. It's really scary, but really freeing and really necessary, I think, for everyone to experience. And so I did. I was alone for quite a while. I spent most days just focusing on myself. I started exercising. I started really putting in the work in therapy. I read a lot of books during that time. I journaled every day. I made video diaries just talking to myself about where I'm at and how I feel. For months and months and months, I intentionally isolated myself. And I think at some point it did kind of get to be unhealthy. I just had this idea that in order to heal, I had to be completely alone. I had to self-isolate. I had to go into this cocoon and I had to stay there until I was a version of myself that I was ready to show to the world. And sharing that with my therapist and telling him like, I need to self-isolate. I can't let anyone in right now. I'm like closing up shop under construction. I'm just not ready yet. But at the same time, I feel so, so lonely. After a while, it did really start to hit me. But this loneliness felt a lot different than the way I've experienced loneliness in the past. It wasn't this desire for someone to come and save me. It wasn't rooted in like desperation and it wasn't fixated on having a romantic partner. I really longed for community and just connection and people. And my therapist at the time 
really validated the desire for human connection and how important that is. And he had me asking myself questions like, at what point will I be ready to connect with other people? Do I trust myself to connect with people in a way that's balanced and healthy? Do I feel like I deserve that? And at the time I was like, no, I don't deserve that. I'm not ready for that. I'm not a version of myself that I like enough. Not until I've solved all my issues will I be deserving of that human connection. And just saying that out loud to him made me realize that's kind of backwards. We need connection. We've always lived in communities and tribes and worked together and leaned on each other. It isn't a failure to want that and need that. But to me at the time, it felt like a failure. It felt like, no, I need to be okay with being alone. I need to experience that. And I had become so fearful of my codependent tendencies. If I can't feel perfectly fulfilled, completely on my own, then I'll never overcome this codependency. But that just wasn't true. And my therapist really helped me realize that I don't need to self-isolate and figure everything out for myself. There's only so much healing you can do in your self-isolation. No one could hurt me. I can't feel triggered. I won't feel these codependent feelings if I'm just alone. And the next step is to go out and feel that and prove to yourself that you can form relationships and connections that just add to your life, that bring you joy, that help you feel connected. It's really important that we feel connected to something outside of ourselves. And I'm so grateful to my therapist I had at the time. Whether you have a tight circle of friends, a partner, or you feel like you're facing this life all on your own. Therapy is so important. It's always been a place where I can feel safe to process my feelings and build confidence in my ability to communicate. And that's why I'm excited to tell you about today's sponsor, BetterHelp. BetterHelp's mission is to make therapy more accessible and more affordable. And this is an important mission because Finding a therapist can be really hard, especially when you're just limited to the options in your area. BetterHelp is a platform that makes finding a therapist easier because it's online, it's remote, and by filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can match you to a professional therapist in as little as a few days. It's easy to sign up and get matched with a therapist. There's a link in my description. It's betterhelp.com slash camenfam. Clicking that link gets you 10% off your first month of BetterHelp so you can get connected with a therapist and see if it helps you. And because finding a therapist is a lot like dating, if you don't fit with that therapist, which can be a common thing with therapy, you really gotta find who works for you. You can easily switch to a new therapist at no additional cost without stressing about insurance, who's in your network, anything like that. I truly don't know what I would do without therapy. During times of self-isolation, that therapy session feels like the dose of human connection that I needed. And it really motivates me to go out in the world and seek that. So if you're struggling, consider online therapy with BetterHelp. Click the link in my description or visit betterhelp.com slash camenfam. Thanks again to BetterHelp for supporting this channel. After that conversation with my therapist, it was really a turning point for me. I was on the fence about where I was living and where my life was headed and what I really wanted out of life. But that was the thing that helped me officially decide that I wanted to move, that I didn't want to live in Florida, I felt like there wasn't a lot of like-minded people to connect with. And that was kind of part of the reason why I was like, okay, well, I'm not even gonna try right now to connect with anyone. It feels like there's really no one. And I wanted to move to a place where it felt like there was people to meet and things to do and life to experience. So I made a plan to move and go seek that. And I really shifted my mindset away from this idea that I wasn't ready. There's never a wrong time to go out in the world and be yourself. It takes some courage and you might not feel ready, but if you wait around until you feel ready, you might be waiting around forever. There are people out there who are like you, who feel the same way. It might not seem like it, 
And there's definitely a point where I convinced myself, like, I don't even think there's people out there that I would connect with. And that's just so not true. So even though I knew I was moving soon, I really opened myself up to the idea of meeting new people. And in that span of nine months before I moved, I made so many friends. And I honestly had a hard time saying goodbye when it was time to leave. I had a going away party and it was really emotional for me. Just being in a room full of people who care about me and knowing that they're gonna miss my presence. I'm important to them. But I was definitely at a place where I had grown as a person as much as I could in that environment with those people. The work I needed to do there had been done. I was ready for more. I was ready to take this next step. And I was so excited moving to a big city, lots of people to meet, with this newfound confidence in myself. Feeling like I had really overcome that desire for a romantic relationship. I felt like I was at the healthiest place mentally that I had ever been. And so much confidence in my ability to connect with people, knowing the value of my presence and just so hopeful for this next chapter. And then I moved and was really humbled. <laughs> I don't really know what happened. I just got hit with a wave of depression and just really sunk into it. It's hard moving to a new place where you don't really know many people, especially when you're not in school or you don't have a job that puts you around other people. I missed my friends. I missed my old life, I missed my old therapist, and all the trust and confidence in myself that I had spent the last year building, it just felt like it was gone. And I was back to wanting to self-isolate, not feeling ready. I kind of had an identity crisis. I wanted to like move here and reinvent myself and just become the most authentic version of me and have the freedom to do so and that's kind of what it was about for me and I got here and I'm like I have no idea who I am any sense of personality and belonging that I used to have it vanished I think the blank slateness of it all left me feeling like a blank slate and not in a good way I stopped doing the things that I loved and in my previous bout of self-isolation it was a lot more productive and healthy I was taking the time to work on myself and this time around I was just sad and lonely and I realized I have never felt this alone and I have several really close long distance friends that I've always kept up with. Even in my times of self-isolation, I'd give them a call, we'd catch up. But it felt like those dynamics had changed as well, and I wasn't sure if it was like because I changed. And I saw firsthand that my therapist was right. Being vulnerable, finding community with other people, and allowing that love and validation into your life, even if your life doesn't look perfect, sometimes that's what you need in order to feel better. And it's not unhealthy to want that. That doesn't mean you're codependent. That doesn't mean you hate yourself and you can't stand to be alone. It's just that sometimes you really just need someone to come along and say, I appreciate you. I like being around you. You're a good person. You make me laugh. Sometimes that's exactly what you need to pick yourself up. And so in the past few months, I've really been trying to just be open and put myself out there. It's hard because there's very few people in my life right now who have known me for a long time. And those things just feel a little better when it's coming from someone who you feel known by, who you feel like really sees you and has seen you through many phases in life. It just has more weight to it coming from them. I've always kind of struggled with having surface level connections. I very much value my deep emotional connections that I have with some of my friends. I'm a very emotional person and being able to connect with someone on that level is at the center of most of my significant relationships in life. And I used to hold this attitude of like, if it's not deep, I don't want it. And I've had to kind of appreciate the value of 
more surface level connections. When you're lonely, sometimes like it's it's just nice to be around people. Even if you're not talking about how you really feel or what's going on with you, just talking to someone about whatever mundane thing, there's value in that. That's important. Not every relationship needs to be super deep. And when you move to a new place and you're trying to make new friends, your relationships are going to have to start somewhere. As someone with codependency issues who has always had this desire for deep connections, I've struggled in the past with oversharing and trauma dumping and trying to almost force this emotional intimacy too early in my relationships and not allowing room for it to grow and progress at a natural, normal pace. I think that's another thing that was kind of holding me back is I didn't trust myself to connect with someone and not share too much right off the bat and like scare them. I knew that was a tendency I had and so I had to remind myself that it's not really a healthy place to start when getting to know someone. So yeah, this phase of my life has been lonely and challenging, but I'm happy to be trying to make friends and trying to build community and just show up as my authentic self. But I do trust myself now. I trust in my ability to connect and communicate while still being protective of the things that I shouldn't share right away. And also just reminding myself that loneliness is not a weakness. I remember one time a long time ago in group therapy, we were talking about the difference between being alone and feeling lonely because they're not mutually exclusive. You can be alone without feeling lonely and you could be surrounded by people and still feel lonely. And I think what I took away from that was if I'm alone and feel lonely, that's on me. I wanted so badly to conquer loneliness, to be completely alone and be like, you know what? I'm not even lonely. That isn't the answer and that's not realistic. And it's perfectly understandable to feel lonely when you're all alone. Connecting with others is what makes life meaningful. It's an amazing feeling when you find peace in solitude. I'm grateful to have experienced that and I'm much more happy with being alone than I was in the past. It's not something that I'm like terrified of, but I know that that's not what I want. I want a life filled with love and laughter and people. I'm an introvert. I'm always gonna cherish my alone time and I'm so glad that I can feel comfortable in that, but I'm really ready to find my community and that's a priority for me right now. That's what I set out to do in moving here. That was one of the most important things is I want to find my people and I know they're out there. It's definitely not easy, but it's important. And I think the more I've put it off, the scarier it's become. But now that I'm really focusing on that, I'm seeing that, you know, I still got it. <laughs> All the things that my friends in the past have said about me are still true. There are so many people who love and appreciate me just being there. Thinking about the fact that there's probably someone out there who feels this exact same way and picturing us meeting and becoming friends and telling each other about this experience of I felt so alone and I never thought I'd really make friends like this. I just have a feeling that I'm gonna meet that person and everything that we've been feeling and worried about and scared of, we're gonna see that in each other and validate each other. There's no way I'm the only one who feels this way, you know? Well, that's it for today's video. I'm so grateful for this outlet. Even in the most lonely times in my life, you guys have been there. It makes me feel less alone to be able to sit and talk, even though I'm alone in my room. But I read your comments and a lot of you have been following my journey for a long time and it just feels like we're old friends. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video, Camille.